Okay, hi. Uh, this is kind of my first time on the stage. I was on the 101 panel yesterday uh, for just a minute. Uh, so I'll go into more detail about the badges. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe they're bringing one, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so um, I'm Mar Williams. Uh, I designed the DEF CON badge this year and uh, a little bit more, so I'll get into that. Um, uh, first off, Sahu uh, Chifuyat Mar. Um, we are on southern Paiute land. Uh, and I wasn't speaking Paiute, but what I was speaking might help you later. All right. Oh, I can't see this very well. <laughs> Is there a way I can, how do I make this bigger on my screen so I can read it? I'm gonna squint. Let's try that. <laughs> um, okay, so you can see my art around Khan. Uh, it's on the signage and... Uh... Oh, look, there's a whole thing right there. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, uh, so I've been doing art for DEF CON for uh, a good number of years. Uh, and uh, my first art that I did for DEF CON was DEF CON 17. Uh, and uh, I've been coming since whatever the last year at the Alexis Park was, if anybody knows the year for that. I think it was 13, I don't know. Um, uh, I've uh, chaired and been a founding member of two Denver hacker spaces. Um, I've run a gallery, I've uh, painted murals uh, all over the country and uh, even did one in Beijing for DEF CON China the other year. Um, I've had a Denver Art Museum, <laughs> Denver Art Museum residency uh, in 2016 where uh, I explored um, the interactions between uh, people and their data online. Uh, and yeah, and so a lot of people made this badge project happen. Um, so I have Nutmeg here and uh, Ada, who is always my amazing helper. And uh, Bonnie Finley is out there in the audience. Uh, she did the, the 3D modeling of the badge. Uh, okay, and then we have Polar, Onk, Will Tuttle, Trash Robot, Kyle Kelly, and Edison. So thanks to all these guys. Okay, so what are the badges? Uh, the badges are actually Penrose tiles. So if you put them together, you can see they kind of tile. Um, so they're an example of aperiodic tiling. And this can get kind of complicated. Uh, and there's a Wikipedia article. You can read about it if you're really curious about how Penrose tiles work. Um, but Nutmeg here had a really good quote about it, which is, uh, it's the most complex jigsaw puzzle you've ever done with just two pieces. Um, in, this, in this specific example of Penrose tiling, uh, we've used two rhombi. Um, one is a little fatter and one is a little skinnier. Um, and you can see that the human badges are the fat rhombus, rhombi, uh, and the skinny one is the inhuman. Um, so in, in physical space, uh, you can actually get a bunch of friends together and put them together and you can make a mosaic, which is kind of cool. Um, so what I wanted to represent by doing that was that the DEF CON attendees, uh, we can connect and create these broad and infinitely unique communities. In order to visualize that, uh, we have uh, a project online. If you look on the back of your badge, there's a URL, uh, spux.art. Um, and if you look in your badge pack, there's a UUID on the back of this little guy right here. And there's something that you can type into the website. And that gives you your own unique tile that you can add and place as many times as you want. So you can get together with friends or you can just kind of see how this is evolving uh, naturally over time. Uh, so check it out. It's going to be up and down because it's DEF CON and, you know, we're all hackers and who knows what happens. But uh, 
check back if it's down, for sure. So you'll be able to select your color, shape. Um, you can put your handle in, you, in if you choose, or you can leave it anonymous. Um, and yeah, we'll just see what it looks like. There's, uh, I'm not sure the number of humans this year so far, but like 26,000, something like that was the last number that I was aware of. So uh, let's see if it renders that many. <laughs> So here's, here's kind of what it looks like last time we got a screen cap of it. So it's growing a little bit at a time. Um, okay, and yes, thank you to Nutmeg for the amazing uh, front end development work creating this, like, geez, how long? Uh, like six weeks. Yeah, like six weeks, like super fast project. Um, yeah, they're amazing, okay. So uh, physical badges, all right, so now we get to the part where uh, half of you are very upset that you didn't get the real badge. So I'm gonna talk more about the manufacturing issues and, uh, and what happened there and what we're trying to do to make it right and what we've been trying to do to make it right. Um, <clears throat> but let me talk about what they are. So your human badge is made of polycarbonate plastic um, and it's got a clear polycarbonate chamber on it. The reason that I chose this material is because I've been to so many cons where my badges are bumping around with my badge life stuff and things are popping off and I'm losing LEDs. Um, and I just wanted something really sturdy that uh, wouldn't break. So I haven't seen a broken badge yet and uh, hopefully we're still good for a while. So it even has these little feet that pop off and on and uh, it's, it's nice that you can just pop them off and on and they don't break, knock on wood. Um, so, that's, so that's the badge as intended. So because of manufacturing problems, we had to do uh, a backup badge. And early on, uh, we decided uh, to put out this um, shitty add-on, right? It's the inserts for your badge, and it's the non-electronic shitty add-on. So you can make it electronic. So we had uh, released the specs for the chamber on defcon.org. If you caught that, maybe you made a cool PCB or uh, something else that fits into this chamber. So we didn't want uh, the people who have created something to be out of luck. So uh, what I did was I made this other, oh, let's see, let's move forward a slide so you can actually see what I'm talking about. There we go. Um, so you can see the actual human badge there and then the backup badges, uh, which about half of you have, um, uh, they're meant to hold an insert of any size. So um, it's kind of like a floppy plastic material. It's uh, flexible. I don't have one in me or show you on the stage here. But it'll fit uh, any thickness, right? So if you have a PCB with stuff all over it, you can pop it in there. And you notice these two little tabs. There's some little flanges, basically. So you can also put a paper insert in there and it won't fall out. So that was our, that was the solution for the last minute badges. So hopefully uh, that's been working out for people and yeah, doing, doing the best we can there. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I'll talk about how, what the design process was for this badge. So we started way back in January, is that right? Okay, yeah, January. Um, and we were looking at all kinds of different concepts, like we were trying to figure out if we could do like blow molded badges uh, and have like ferro fluid inside and the, you could interact with magnets, you know, all, all kinds of stuff and we just threw a bunch of ideas around and eventually kind of trim down and then land on something and so we landed on these Penrose tiles. Um, so, uh, yeah, from there, I'll go to the next slide so you can see it. Yeah, so this was sort of the sketching concept portion of it. 
um, making our first mock-ups uh, out of you know paper and laser cutting stuff and 3D printing. Um, so we hit a lot of challenges, but you know, true hacker fashion, we just go into stuff not really knowing what we're doing, and <laughs> but that's the point. Um, so you know, there's some challenges there. We had to um, we're, we had to create a 3D model that was set up for injection molding. So you have to do very specific things there, like make sure that. Uh, uh, Oh, where's my notes here? See, Bonnie should be up here because she could speak to it <laughs> a little better since she did the 3D model. Um, but basically, you have to make it so that um, it pops out of the mold easily, and the plastic flows around the way it's supposed to. And so that was a whole that was a whole learning process there. Um, <clears throat> more than that, manufacturing challenges. So. <laughs> Let me take you on a little ride here. Um, so uh, we started out um, trying to figure out how do we print on these in a way that the print isn't just going to scrape off. Like we didn't initially want to use stickers because you know then stickers come off and get put everywhere. So that kind of thing. Um, once we started getting into the process and they're being actually produced. Um, we ran into issues with custom colorants. There's 11 of the inhuman badges and they all need to be a specific color and manufacturers don't carry all those colors. So like I'm on the phone with manufacturers trying to get, uh, you know, just the colorant people, trying to get them to send colorant to places and they're running out of colorant and then like we're having to do backup colors and all this stuff. Uh, and then Right as we're starting to get our badges in, the, the molds break, right? And these are the permanent, they're made out of steel or something. They're not supposed to break, but they broke. And uh, they're like, that's okay, we'll, we'll repair that. And, uh, and I'm like, well, do we need like a backup mold? And they're like, no, no, no. Once you repair one of these things, it's like setting a broken bone. Like it'll be even stronger the next time. Okay, so we, we don't need a backup one. We'll keep going. And so we got the backup one going and popped out, uh, you know, a couple thousand badges and then it's down again. And uh, what happened? Oh my God. Oh, you know, this just happens sometimes in manufacturing. So I've heard that story a lot. Is this is just how it happens. But it's always like after the fact, right? So anyway, so they broke a second time. Takes more time to get it going again. Third time. That was about a week ago. <laughs> so uh, the mold is currently back up, repaired again, and in production. And uh, if we all cross our fingers really tightly, there, there might be some badges to trade over the weekend. And those of you with the floppy badges might be able to trade in. Um, so we're working on that as best we can. Um, all right, so some last minute hustles to try and uh, get these problems solved is uh, we had uh, Bonnie here fly to Chicago and rent a truck and put a bunch of badges in the back and drive it over the weekend all the way down to Vegas. <laughs> um, we had to swap some of our pad printing for stickers. Um, we actually were trying to make backup badges at home uh, just for the inhuman badges that we were missing. So we're like, we got piles of silicone and like polyurethane and we're pouring badges and we actually have some cool artful badges that we made out of that process. Luckily we didn't need those, but like we went to great measures to try and get these, all these badges in here. Um, all right, and so then the other, uh, oh yeah, I have some photos here of, uh, there's like a, a badge on a floor tile in Nebraska somewhere. Lincoln, Nebraska. Your badges visited Lincoln, Nebraska on the way. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so and then if we can't get you all badges, we're looking at a plan, no promises, for if you attend next year, bring your floppy plastic badge and then we can trade it out for the real badge next year. So at least you have it then. 
Okay, so the lanyard puzzle. If you've noticed on your lanyards, there is some characters. Um, I can't say much about what it is, but you have the weekend to try and figure it out. Um, you won't find an Uber lanyard until Sunday, so uh, there's an image up of the Uber lanyard. Um, so give it an eyeball if you're working on the puzzle. All right. Um, I have been a working artist for all of my adult life, and one thing that I know well is that uh, good design is invisible. And I think they say the same thing about sysadmins, right? <laughs> um, so, like, an example that I can think of are logos are uh, an art of subtraction. So it's not immediately apparent what happens behind the scenes. There's just a lot of tweaking and research and all of that and massaging until you get it just pixel perfect, right? Um, these are not, this is a non-electronic year, right? So working with those own bounds, uh, there's no bells and whistles to show off. You can't see all the parts that are going into this. So we end up with something that is, is rather simplistic. And then my hope there is that in interacting with these, um, they do what we want them to do, is to get you all to showcase who you are, to use these chambers to put to basically repeat what happens at DEF CON, but give it a place, right? Which is people show off, um, you know, their crews, their, their individuality, they make art and put it in these badges, on the badges, on the lanyards, they give each other little tokens. And so that's, that's the point of this, is that um, there is so, there are so many artists in this crowd, it's so adjacent to being a hacker um, and I love to see it, so uh, that's what I wanted to do there. So thank you for allowing me to share this process with you, and thank you for being so understanding, the people that I've talked to about the badge issues, uh, and I hope we can make this right for everyone. Okay, so uh, Yoko Ki, uh, shoot any questions at me, and um, after this talk, you can find me um, on Instagram as Spuxo, um, patreon.com Spux. If you like my work, I send stuff in the mail to people uh, monthly, and I've been doing that for some years, so it's pretty fun. Um, and then I'll also be in the vendor area uh, selling art and swag, so yeah. Um, I don't have my glasses on, so you're going to have to like wave yourself around if you want to ask me a question. <laughs> Anybody? All right, well. Okay, sounds like a plan. Is that cool? Yeah. No, that's good. All right, so this is uh, after the talk, uh, instead of before the talk, because we ran out of time. But first time speaker, do a shot. <laughs> 